What is up, fellow internet nerds? You like art? You like weird AI stuff? You like scary art? Well, you've come to the right place. AI art is terrifying. As we have seen in my previous video where I tried to generate my friend Derek Kelly, AI is scary. I am scared. Sometimes AI can be an incredible tool, as we have seen in the previous frame rate video. But today we are going to cross into a barrier of terrifying but incredible. We're going to take a look at text to image generation, meaning we're going to give an AI a line of text and it is going to create an image. We can give it any text we want, but do not expect any sort of predictable result because it's not, it's not predictable at all. Sometimes it does a great job and will give you exactly what you asked for or like, you know, something in that direction. Other times it'll just give you a big pile of digital mush, which arguably could be even more enjoyable to look at. But the limitations here are endless. We could ask it the meaning of life. We could ask it to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Doesn't matter. We can do that. Also, I said I wasn't gonna bring the microphone back. I brought the microphone back. I do what I want. All right, let's get into it. We're gonna need a program called Visions of Chaos. Uh, now, Visions of Chaos is not a machine learning program by itself. It's actually just a image synth. synth it's just a open source like image simulation software. So you could run like a mathematical equation and simulate the results in a visual space. There actually is a lot of really interesting stuff in the software. A lot of it I do not understand at all, but we're going to add our own scripts to Visions of Chaos so we can simulate some machine learning visual simulations. And now just a heads up before we go any further, I do have to say if you plan on doing this yourself, you're going to need a pretty good Nvidia GPU because we're going to use CUDA. In my computer, I have a 2070 Super and that's like entry level. I can like just barely get by. Uh, to create this sort of stuff. Another thing, I will link a video in the description on how to actually set this up for machine learning. It's not necessarily complicated, it's just a lot of steps, but once it's installed, you're good to go. Let's take a look at some of the absolute chaos I have created while trying to learn how to use the software. The very first thing I typed in was hot dog. I don't know why not. Computer generated hot dog. <laughs> I also tried portrait. It kinda looks like a frog. Portrait of a frog, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now, once you start playing with a tool like this, you start to feel the boundaries and how it reacts when you use particular words. For example, if you use hyper-realistic, you'll get a very different result. I just showed you portrait. This is hyper-realistic portrait. Very different, also terrifying. The reason why I think you get a result like this is because the text to image data set is built off of images, obviously. A lot of that data set is actually art. There is a style of art where you create hyper-realistic oil paintings. They look almost like photographs. They're typically very shiny, and that is why I think we get something like this. So for most of my tests, I like to use the word hyper-realistic because it was just so interesting. So naturally, we've moved on to hyper-realistic Shrek. I don't know what's going on here. Weird pirate Shrek with like a monster Shrek with a four pack behind him. And then I tried hyper-realistic Shrek portrait, which I mean, I guess it's like a, a portrait painting. It's a painting portrait of uh, Shrek. By the way, the resolution of all these exports are about 300 by 300 pixels. The reason being is that it requires a ton of VRAM to produce these images. And the only way to get more VRAM is you're looking at like extremely expensive graphics cards, or you could rent like server processing, but I like doing it myself. Another thing you can do is you can give it a target image um, and ask it to morph that into the text that you put in. For example, here I gave it an image of Shrek and I just put in the word hyper realistic and uh, this is this is what it created. It kind of reminds me of that uh, that character from what's like Clash of Clans, the guy with the, the yellow helmet. He's a, it's like a Clash of Clans Shrek. Okay, another one I tried is I tried to turn Curtis Connor into a hot dog. A little homage to the Hot Jokes tour. There's an intro that we filmed where uh, he was in a hot dog suit, so it th doesn't matter. Here's the result. Kind of fun. Now I couldn't keep this to myself. I had to ask you guys on Twitter, what should I create? And I responded to your tweets with whatever you said. Some of these results were interesting, others not so interesting. You really don't know, it's a roll of the dice. Well, let's take a look. Here is, uh, we had the, the robot army, it was kind of cool. Lazy lion, may the force be with you. Say hello to my little friend, brain matter, bouncy balls. When I did that one, I was like, I don't know if I can post this, but then it kind of turned into like bouncy balls. I started to make them gifts. New phone, who dis? Slinky rolling down a staircase. Among Us. Why did the astronaut have oddly shaped feet? Oops, I ripped my pants. That one was actually kind of interesting. Bee's knees. Bee's knees. 
but I need to move on to some of my favorite results. The first one being at nightclub. In this test, I wanted to see if I could get like bright colors, like neon, that sort of stuff. And it actually turned out pretty good. Now when I do most of these simulations, I add a recursive zoom. So every time it creates a frame, it just zooms in a little bit further. That way the image is always changing and it gets a lot more interesting. So let's take a look at this nightclub one. Right off the bat, it looks like it created like a nightclub scene. And then all of a sudden these people start merging up as if they're like lined up or waiting outside the club, like waiting to get in. And then palm trees show up. Uh, it's very interesting how it like morphs and generates. Here's another really cool one I like. I put in skull. Uh, this one specifically just did a really good job of just creating the object that I put in. It's like almost realistic. Technically, I didn't say human skull, so it's not wrong. Maybe it's a three-eyed alien skull with a giant nose. Now, by far, the absolute most interesting animation I did was beyond the simulation. This one, I actually trained it for like three days straight because it just looked so cool. And actually while I was training it, I couldn't use my computer. So I ended up just streaming the whole thing on Twitch, just like bought the stream. Like I wasn't even there. I just, cool thing about that though, is that if I was out, I could just like look at my phone and be like, oh look, that's where my animation is. This was actually a suggestion from a friend on Instagram and it was a good suggestion, but let's have a look. This was beyond the simulation. So like right off the bat, we get a planet and a guy with a VR headset and it's just super trippy. And then all of a sudden aliens appear and then those aliens start morphing into like monkey looking people. And then this guy shows up with a squiggly head. Kind of looks like they're in like a space shuttle looking down on earth. And then all of a sudden a bridge from that space shuttle just connects to earth. <laughs> There's more apes and aliens back to VR and the squiggles and galaxies. There's like a pile of fingers and then this weird pyramid thing appears with like a, a comet or something hitting the earth beside it and then these people in robes appear followed by more aliens of course and whoa looks like we're at a convention center i don't know what's going on here but that was something else <laughs> i feel like anything you do with this tool is both incredible and terrifying but either way i think it is the most absolute fascinating thing real quick for those who followed the instructions on how to actually do this yourself i will show you my favorite settings that i found were the best once you got everything set up go to mode machine learning pytorch text to image the script that i used is the very last one mse vq gan plus clip z plus quantize i only know like what half of that means but that was the script giving me the best results i did a custom size of 300 pixels by 300 pixels this may be different for you depending on what gpu you have and then before i change any other settings i click the create recursive zoom i leave the zoom at default and then for iterations i do 10 and then i update my image every two iterations from my experiments those have been the best settings everything else i don't touch i leave it as default i think this has a lot of potential to create some very very interesting art. But yeah, I think this is super cool. I personally, my favorite form of like any sort of AI stuff is visual. I love the like visual stuff that computers can generate. This has been like the most exciting AI thing I found in a while. I remember when I was a kid, I watched a video called Cows, Cows and Cows. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it too. It is by a creator. I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's like Cranks or something. The videos that he creates are very, uh, they're very weird. He does all this on his own in After Effects, but the AI feels feels very similar to what he creates when it comes to just chaos and art. Anyways, what I was saying, ever since I was a kid, I was very interested in the this style of content that he created. And that was actually one of the factors that led me to learn After Effects when I was young. Is that I just wanted to make like fun, weird videos that people would watch and be like, w like, w why? I don't know. But this sort of AI really connects with my childhood. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I've always liked this kind of weird crap. Anyways, that's it for this video. This has been my wonderful AI find. I hope you guys found this at least half as interesting as I did. I know I posted some of these on the internet, like on Twitter and stuff, and people were like, what is this crap? Like, get out of here. But I like it. So if you, <laughs> I guess that's it. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe. Maybe I'll make another one. Not about this. I'll make another video that you might like if you subscribe. 
Cool. Bye.